Hello, party people. People who love to party. It's me, Mr. Bim, here to talk to you today about special right triangles. And today we're going to start off with 45, 45, 90 degree triangles. So please uh, download the little worksheet, print that out for yourself, or you will need to draw along with me, um, which will not be as fun. So I hope you have a printer. Now let's go to what we're trying to work on right now, which is that bad boy, special right triangle. Ding. Absolutely. Now we're just going to be working with one special right triangle today, and that'll be the 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. And we're going to start off working with these things using the Pythagorean theorem. And you probably know the Pythagorean theorem, so do your parents. Everybody and their mama knows the Pythagorean theorem. It's a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Now, most people forget what exactly that has to do with anything, but we still remember that from math because the formula is so simple. It involves the ABCs. The word square is fun to say, plus, equal, mm, the whole shibboleth. So if you would draw along with me, we are going to put a 45 degree angle, another 45 degree angle, and 90 degree angle in this triangle so that it will simulate the 45, 45, 90 degree angle triangle that we are trying to deal with. And these on the sides, we're going to put in guesses for sides. We are trying to come up with a process by which you can skip using the Pythagorean theorem. And we're going to use our pattern recognition skills in order to do that. Now, in order for the human brain to recognize a pattern, it needs at least three examples to truly be able to know that that is the right pattern. So we're going to start nice and easy. This side, this whole side right here, the whole thing, the whole side is one unit long, just one. If that's true, can we find the other sides? Believe yes, we can find the other sides. That's why we're here. Down here, this side would also have to be one unit long. You realize that, right? If this is 45 degrees and this is 45 degrees, the base angles theorem would state that these two sides would need to be the same since the base angles are congruent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Math theorem for you. Okay, if that's true, I've got one and one. How am I gonna find that third side? Well, that's where Pythagoras comes in, who was kind of a creep, but we're gonna use his theorem. And by the way, it wasn't his theorem. He stole it from somebody else. See, this is one squared plus one squared is equal to C squared. This would be the A side, the B side, and then the C side is this side that we're looking for right here, the big one, the hypotenuse. That'll be one plus one is equal to C squared. Oh, so easy. 2 is equal to c squared. Oh, wonderful. It's so wonderful. So that means 2 is equal to c squared. The way that we get rid of that squared so that we know just what c is equal to is we square root both sides. That is the inverse operation for squared. That will undo it. And c is equal to root 2. So that means when this side's 1, this side is root 2. This whole side. I know you guys are looking at that I put it right here and I didn't put it on this thing. It's because I have all these other examples to do. So that's why I'm doing that. So quit tripping, just write it down. Okay, next one. Let's try a side length of two. Ooh. So if this is two, how long is this side right here? If you said two, you were correct. These two guys have got to be the same because of that 45 degree and the 45 degree. But how long is this? Well, let's go back to our work page. There's our old work. This time we're working with two squared plus two squared is equal to C squared. Okay, four plus four is equal to C squared. Eight equals C squared. <clears throat> I like to write it one more time so that I can show you guys the square root step. See how I wrote it twice? I would like to just put the square root step in here, but I don't want you to get confused about what I'm doing. And then we've got C is equal to root eight. Well, this isn't gonna help us with a pattern. We have to know how to simplify square roots. And the easiest way would be the jailbreak method. I'm gonna break eight up into two factors that multiply together to make eight. I have to multiply, which would be four and two. And then I'm gonna break up anything else that I've got. Let's see, four would break up as two and two. Two breaks up is two and one. And I don't really need to count the one since it's all timesing. So this would be 
the square root of two times two times two. And the way the square roots work, if you've got two of the same factor in there, bam, that means that one of them gets to escape and the other one uh, disappears. It dies. It dies. We can say that, right? Okay. Equals two root two. Ta da! Two root two. Oh, yeah. Two root two. Now, some of you guys have probably done this before. Wait a second. I think maybe, well, I don't know. Some of you have done this before. So your mind is already starting to scrabble inside of itself and scritch and scratch to find what this pattern could be. You're starting to remember things. You're like, oh, I think I know what the next one is. That's very good. Good. I'm glad. Uh, your brain's supposed to do that. You are working with a human level of, fish, of efficiency right now. Congrats. But for everybody else who hasn't seen this before, uh, I mean, that's not enough information to get a pattern out of. So we put in three. If this side is three, then this side is also going to be three. We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find this other side. I know what you're thinking. Man, this seems like this lesson is about the Pythagorean theorem. It's not. It's just the Pythagorean theorem is how we get to the shortcut. We do the work enough so that we understand how the shortcut works so that we can then use the shortcut all the time when we have 45, 45, 90 triangles. Okay, three squared plus three squared, that is nine plus nine. Nine plus nine makes 18. It's equal to C squared, so we've got to square root both sides. That is the inverse operation here is the square root. 18 breaks up. I can break it up super quick. If you don't like how fast I break it up, as you can always pause this at any time, especially if I talk too fast, you can rewind it, all that good stuff. Square root of two times three times three. Ooh, there's your pair. Your pair's in the back this time. It's three. Zoop. We move the three up to the front. C is equal to three root two. As I put that down, all of a sudden, the brain starts to get its work on. I did a side of one. This was one. This was root two. A side of two. This is two. This is two root two. A side of three. This is three. This is three root two. So when I jump ahead and I put in five without using the Pythagorean theorem, can you figure out what the other two sides are? Now, I'm still going to use the Pythagorean theorem, but if you think you know, write them down now. First of all, you should know what one of the sides is. This is definitely five. But that other side, ooh, what could it be? I have an idea. And that idea is five root two. Because whatever these sides have been, we've just slapped a root two on. Mr. Beal, I don't believe you. I got something else. I got nine root 45. Whew. Well, I'm going to show you why that's not right. Five squared plus five squared is equal to C squared. 25 plus 25 is equal to C squared. 50 is equal to C squared. That would mean the square root of 50 is equal to the square root of C squared, which is just C. So C is equal to root 50, but root 50 is really 2 times 5 times 5. 25 times 2 makes 50. You know what I'm talking about? These two fives, one's going to get out. Oh, my goodness. 5 root 2, just like I told you. You guys got to believe me. I'm telling you the truth. So generally, so that we can do this all the time whenever we see a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, what is our formula here? Well, if this side is x, any number, then this side over here is that same number, x. But this side is that number times the square root of 2. x, x, x root 2. So let's see how that plays out. Let's try another example, like straight from the beginning, straight from the top. Example. What if I were to told you this side was 7? This whole side is 7 units long. How long are the other sides? Well, down here on the bottom, it's also got to be 7, which is probably my favorite thing in this whole triangle is that you get one for free. But the other side would be 7 times the square root of 2. That's it. And then your problem would be solved. 
With one side of a triangle, you get all of the rest of them, bam, instantly. Special right triangles, they're very special. Now there are harder versions of these types of problems. For instance, what if I told you that this side was four units long? Before I get further into this, can you please put a right angle and some 45 degree angles in here, which I forgot to do? Pardon me. Okay, we've got a side of four. How am I gonna find these other two sides? Someone out there is like, this side's four. No, these two guys are the same. This one was the one that was supposed to be times root two, but now it's just a solid number. It's just equal to four, but it's supposed to be x times the square root of two. Well, if it's supposed to be that, set them equal to each other and solve it out. Now you have to know what you're doing with square roots in order to do this problem. So if you're like, I don't know how to work with square roots, you gotta go back and figure out how to work with square roots. Otherwise this stuff doesn't make sense. We're gonna divide both sides by root two. That's gonna give us four over root two is equal to x. And that's nice, but we're not allowed to have a square root on our bottom. It's called an irrational bottom and it's not okay. So we're going to times both of the top and the bottom by something that will make the bottom no longer irrational, no longer a square root. And that's gonna be square root of two. If we can get two twos under that square root sign, one of them will escape and the other will die and we'll just be left with two. So on the bottom, we've got two, and on the top we have four square roots of two, and that's still equal to x. And you're thinking, I'm done, I hate this, this is way too much work. You're not done yet if you want full credit for this problem. Two goes into four twice. So this would be two root two is equal to x. Mr. Bill, I wanted to go into this two under the square root sign. Does not work like that. Outside stuff interacts with outside stuff, not inside stuff. No, no, no. So this side was four. We just did all this work. How big is this side? Well, this side and this side are the x side. I just figured out what x was. That means this side is two root two, and so is this one. Ooh. Seems like it was fast, but it was magnificent. I now need you to go ahead and pause. There's two problems for you, just in case you did not download the thing, which they're not written there anyway. I wrote them out, so you need to see them right now, no matter what. You also need to put the 45-45s and the little right angles in there. You need to write all this stuff out. Why didn't I type it in the computer and make it all fancy that way? Because I didn't. Get off my back, okay? Just, I'm going to pause it, all right? And you are going to do it. We're back. Hopefully everything went well. One of them was actually rather spicy, kind of difficult. Sincerely hope you tried it on your own first without giving up and just pressing play on the video again, starting to cry and stuff. Don't do that. Over here, this is an X side. This is an X side. This is an X root two. Mr. Beal, how can you tell? This side is across from 45. This side's across from 45. They're the same, so the sides are the same length. This is across from 90. It's the longest side. It gets the x square roots of 2. That means this answer will be 10, and this will be 10 root 2. Now, we go over here. Mm, the Thunderdome. This is x, this is x, and this is x root 2. Mr. Beal, how can you tell? Well, two of them have got to be x's. And the one that's got to be x root 2 is across from the right angle. It points at it. It's the hypotenuse. Okay, how do I do this problem? <laughs> you got to set this 9 equal to x times the square root of 2. Divide root 2 on both sides. You get x is equal to 9 over root 2. You're not allowed to have that root 2 on the bottom, so you have to multiply by root 2 on the top and bottom to rationalize the denominator. So that'll be nine root two over two, and that's equal to x. Okay, well, what does that mean? That means this side is nine root two over two long, and nine root two over long, two long over here, which is a real number. Like we can put that in our calculator and find out how long that is. I'm not doing that right now though. That's that, that right there, that right there. It's 45, 45, 90 degree triangles. Uh, please 
do your uh, independent practice on this and good luck. Uh, at the top of your independent practice, practice should be some review. Um, Got to keep doing that review. Got to do everything. All right. Hey, stay safe out there. World crazy.